How are we going, guys? Welcome to Hogs Vlog Live. Namaste to everyone over in India and also the followers uh, over in America as well and here in Australia. There's a lot of Indian uh, followers all around the world, which is fantastic. The game is spreading. So we've got Atal Baral. He's just joined us. Uh, thanks very much for joining me again. Ahan. Um, actually, there's a few. Ashwin. Uh, namaste to you too, Ashwin. I noticed that down there. Um, let me just scroll down. Dipen, uh, Milan. All right. Uh, a few people already joined on, so the comments are just flying down there. So I've missed a few people as well, but sorry about that. But let's get straight into it. Where was this third game and the series won and lost? Let's get right onto it by rolling the bumper. I thought yesterday was a fantastic game, but where India needed to take control of the game was getting power pay, uh, <laughs> a little bit of a stuff up there, power play wickets early on. They needed to get stuck into the openers, and they did. And what that did, put pressure on the middle order, and I think through the game they felt that they had the game home and hosed uh, until Sam Curran came out, and I just thought they'd just felt that Sam Curran was uh, just going to get out at any stage. But you can't take your foot off the pedal. They got away with it, India. They were in control. They got too ahead of themselves. But the key moment was in the power play phase. The first over, let's go to the uh, next point, creating chances. We're going to talk about creating chances. So we'll go to the first over where Bhuvneshwar uh, Kumar was bowling to Jason Roy. Now, this is the fourth uh, or fifth ball of the over. As you can see, they've changed the field. They've got the uh, Rohit Sharma there out short mid-off. And what that's done is caused Roy to just try and creep across the stumps and work the ball onto the gaps on the leg side. Now, what has Boovy done there? He set him up for the next ball. If we can go to the next slide... He's changed the field, and what he's done, he's got Rohit Sharma on the leg side, and what that uh, has created is Roy to think about different areas where he wants to play. He's comfortable taking Bhuvneshwar with the in-swing through the leg side, but Bhuvneshwar knows that, and what he's done is created Roy to think about staying leg side of the ball and trying to play through the offside and created that uh, wicket-taking opportunity where he bowled in there. So that was fantastic stuff by Bhuvneshwar. Now, you need teammates to help you out as well. The other uh, player, the player of the series, you needed to do something. You needed to change it up, and that was Bairstow. So Bairstow to the opening bowlers was trying to get out of his crease, and uh, what Part did was come up to the stumps, if we can have a look here, and forced Bairstow to play from the crease. And uh, Bairstow was trying to get outside the line of off stump to take away the LB uh, opportunities from Bhuvneshwar. And uh, what has he done? He's been trapped right in front of middle stump. So great stuff there from the, uh, from the Indian bowlers as well as Punt, the keeper there. Because... You know, that is very risky to change those plays. And sometimes youngsters out there, it's not about trying to create that wicket-taking ball. It's about just manipulating the field but still bowling the ball that you want to bowl. You just change the field to try and play in the uh, batsman's mind, and that's what they did well yesterday, India. Now we're going to go to the next point here, the value of Hardik Pandya bowling. Now, Hardik Pandya should have played in the first two games, but... There's a bigger picture here. You've got a T20 World Cup around, and you've also got uh, a, T a 50 over World Cup coming up in a couple of years' time. You need him to get strength and overs under his belt, but you've got to do it gradually, and that's why they didn't bowl him in the first two matches. But not bowling him in the first two matches as well creates opportunities for the other bowlers in the, in the lineup, gives them more experience under pressure. So if you lose this series... What it's actually doing, you're, you're gaining uh, you're gaining more exposure to those other players coming through and building your depth. That's what these series are all about: is building your depth. So, India have come out the one, with the win by bowling Hardik Pandya at the most valuable time in the last uh, in the last game. I just like the variance in pace 
I like the way that he uh, knows exactly the field that he wants to bowl to, and he attacks, he cramps the batsman up for room. He makes the batsman take the risk. Uh, very rarely do you see him bowl any loose balls, and he's becoming a front-line bowler, and I wouldn't be surprised in the T20 World Cup is with Boomer coming back in, he might be used as a fifth bowler, and they'll go for another spinning option. So um, he's just valuable with the ball, but also with the bat as well. And uh, if we move to the next point, and we've got a few uh, other points here. Catches win matches. Now, this is a lesson for the youngsters out here. Um, I just want to go – there was a turning point yesterday with Pant out in the middle. Uh, he was 27 off 20 balls. I've just got my point uh, points here. Rahul was 5 off 15 at this stage. Now, this was a big moment of the game. Now, this is Sam Curran running in from the deep. He is pulled out. He's only a metre and a half away from the ball. Now, uh, if you just come back to me, Shubs, please, uh, get the screen back to me. Thanks very much. Now, I remember very early in the piece when I came back in the Australian One Day team, something like that happened to me. I pulled out. Ricky Ponting came up to me and... Uh, well, was polite with what he said to me. He said, don't ever do that again. If you've got half a chance of taking the catch, you go for it. Now, if Sam Curran went for it, took that catch, pants out, Rahul was struggling at the other end, it puts a whole lot more pressure on that Indian lineup and also Hardik Pandya uh, coming in next. And Hardik probably wouldn't have played as uh, co confidently as he did with that pressure being built up. Now, I want to go to the next catch that was dropped. This is Hardik Pandya out in the deep. He dropped a couple of catches, but this was the big one against Sam Curran. Now, if I'm in the Indian camp and uh, the team, I wouldn't be too disappointed with this drop. I, you, you're disappointed with the drop, but look at the balance that he's got there. He's put himself in a perfect position to take this catch on the run. His head was still, his hands are high, he's giving himself every opportunity. He slowed down at that particular stage as well because he sprinted as fast as he could to get into that position. So he's done everything right there and uh, that was a catch that he, should, he, he would normally take, but he didn't. So I'm not too disappointed. I'm just showing you the correct way to get in that position and uh, nine and a half times out of ten, he would take that catch. The earlier catch against Stokes he should have taken, and the other two catches that were dropped during the game later on in the stage nearly cost India as well. Okay, let's just quickly go to the next point. Uh, Rowett and Coley relationship. This is something that's very interesting because a lot of people are asking, should Rowett Sharma captain the T20 team? Well, if you watch certain aspects of it yesterday, Rowett Sharma looked as though he had the helm and he was talking to the bowlers a lot, and Virat Kohli wasn't in the picture. The reason that was happening, because Virat Kohli was out on the fence, and Rohit was still in the ring, and Virat Kohli was allowing Rohit Sharma to play that role, and pass on the experience to the youngsters to keep them calm. Now, this is very good leadership, um, in a sense that Virat Kohli is allowing another player, another senior player, to help him out and take some pressure off him. So this is that particular moment and those little scenes for me tell me that India are in a very, very good space with Virat Kohli not worried um, about his position as captain. He's very comfortable that he's going to keep it and he's allowing Rohit Sharma to help him out. Now that is good teamwork. And uh, I'm, I'm just very happy where India are now. I think they're going into this T20 World Cup as favourites. Um, okay, just before we go to the question the questions, the other the other moment of this game which cost England was when Hardik Pandya came out. England did not bowl Mark Wood. That was one of Hardik Pandya's uh, struggles. Is Mark Wood? They should have bowled him early. But anyway, let's go to the questions. This is the time that I enjoy. Uh, hopefully you agree with my points there, but uh, we'll find out with some of your questions. All right, Shubs, have we got the first question up? Ah, Fat, Fat Huntsman, how are you going again? Yes, it's me again. Uh, I've decided not to change my name considering Brad Hogg himself acknowledged it. <laughs> Anyways, are England too dependent on Stokes, Roy and Bairstow? And should Curran bat up the order? Um, 
Uh, well, you think about Root coming back into the team to stabilise that middle order out number three as well. So they've got a lot of depth there. But there's one player that I'm worried about is Josh Butler, and this is going into the IPL, and you might see one of my reviews soon with uh, Rajasthan Royals. The amount of cricket that these guys have played in the bubble for England, I just felt that jo- Josh Butler was starting to uh, lose uh, – how can you put it? Uh, lose a bit of dedication for the game. Um, but th- That sounds sad, but I, I, I think he's just feeling the pinch – that he uh, can't get around his family, can't get home. Um, and I think mentally the bubble situation is starting to drain him uh, at this stage with the way that I'm seeing him bat. I just don't see that power footwork. But Butler in that middle order adds depth. I don't think they're relying too heavily on uh, Stokes, Roy and Besto. I think they've got a lot of depth and I th- I'm very happy with the way Curran uh, is at the bottom of the order. He adds depth to the batting. And yesterday, Curran's innings was a big moment for him because he was put under pressure. He's placing this side's under pressure as well. And they need that all-rounder. He's bowled well, but that innings is going to be the making of him moving forward. He was under pressure. And what he was do- doing was sizing up the opposition bowlers. He was very conservative against Bhuvanesh Wakumar when the run rate was going up, but he knew he could make it up against the other inexperienced bowlers. He's got smarts on him. I think they've got depth in the batting. I don't think they rely too heavily on all those three players. So for me, England have got good depth. They are the team that are going to challenge India in the T20 World Cup moving forward. I think both teams have got good balance. Okay, Shubs. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Kenev Banzel. When I say Shubs, uh, Shubs is uh, uh, the guy that's helping me in the background here, getting all the questions up. Um, thanks very much, mate. Hey, Hoggy, do you remember me? I am a huge fan from Canada. My question, how are you going, Kenev? I hope everything is well in Canada. And um, you're living the life of uh, harmony over there. It's a beautiful spot, Canada. Uh, what does the playing 11 of India look like after the big boys come in? How do Aussie's uh, white ball team compare to Indian England team? I think we've got a few holes in our Aussie team. I don't think we're uh, up to up to their level at this present moment. I think we've got a lot of problems in the middle order with Australia. But the Indian team, Boomer will come in. I think they'll keep Tarka uh, as the third seam option if they're not going to bowl Hardik Pandya as much um, just because he adds bat- batting depth. Jadeja will come in uh, for Kunal Pandya in this one-day team. Um, I don't think Nat Rajan will, uh, Natarajan will play. Um, I think Shami will come back in as well uh, for Nat Rajan. Actually, Shami will come in for both Tarkur and Nat Rajan. Tarkur uh, will be your fourth choice seamer. Uh, in the batting lineup, what I'd like to see, uh, I think Darwin's place at this present stage um, still a little bit uncomfortable with him out the top. I just think he can be too slow at some stages. Uh, he gets bogged down at certain stages and they are important stages in a, in a one-day tournament. So he's got to find a way to keep consistent uh, with rotating the strike. And I'm still a little bit uncertain with Rahul. He's had one good game here, but there's certain patches as well where he struggles to rotate the strike. So I think someone like Asuria Kumar Yadav is... Uh, biting out the heels of Rahul to uh, go into this one-day international team. So for me, I, th- I think it's f- the batting lineups the same as it is with uh, Surya Kumar Yadav at the moment biting out the heels of Rahul. Eyes, eyes injured as well. He'll be, uh, he'll be there. But uh, Boomer and Shami come back in with the ball. I've waffled on a bit there. Sorry, guys. But anyway, let's go to the next question. Thanks for that, Kenneth. Uh, right, who have we got here? Samir Patel. How are you going, Samir? Uh, what is the reason for Cool Deep struggling, being a Chinaman yourself? Simply, uh, he's blocking, blocking himself off. And if I can just uh, do a little demo here, hopefully uh, I can... So he's blocking himself off, so that means he's uh, he sort of lands as such, but then he brings his front arm right around, and what that does is you're losing control. He's not going towards the target. So for me, I think he's uh, 
got to get better alignment and that will give him more consistency. But also, I think the confidence with all the other spinners doing so well in test level, one day level and T20 level um, is also affecting him mentally as well. So, yeah, he's got to find some form. Otherwise, he might find himself not playing for Cole Cutter this year as well. Okay, next question, Shubs. Uh, Abhijit Kamat, how are you, mate? Um, do you think after Pant's prolific performance in the one days, he'll be the first choice for the number five spot, or do you think Ayer, after recovering, will retain that spot? I think Pant will stay at number four, and uh, actually Ayer will come back out number five. I think they're very comfortable with Pant out four. He can take the game away, uh, especially if the two openers and Virat Kohli do a little bit of damage up front and um, Park comes in those middle overs and takes on the spinners, gets into the momentum and then takes the game away from the opposition. So for me, Park's got to be at number four. He's doing such a wonderful job. Okay, next question, please, Shubs. Everything about cricket. How are you, mate? Is India the best team across all formats in the world? Happy Holy Siri. Oh, Happy Holy Siri, that's right. It's a... Uh, um uh, happy Holy Siri Day over there in India. Um, all formats in the world. All formats in the world. This is a big question. I think they, I think they are definitely uh, best in Test cricket at the moment. Um, we'll find out when they play New Zealand in the World Test Championship later on in the year. T20 cricket, I think they've got the best balanced team. And uh, one day international cricket, I'm still up in the air whether it's them or England. It's how, how they tour. But um, for me, they're, they're definitely in the top two uh, of all formats in the world. I think England are the other ones. So there's a lot of competition between those two teams. Thanks very much for that, uh, everything about cricket. You've put me on the spot there. There's no other team close to these two teams. I think we've just seen some great cricket between England and India. Uh, Aditya Nasale, how are you, mate? Who do you think will captain Delhi Cap Capitals in the absence of Shreyas Iyer? Uh, Ask Coggy. I think um, Ajinka Rahani will captain Delhi Capitals. Um, I, looking at their lineup at the moment, I just think you need that stability, and I always like an Indian captaining, uh, captaining an IPL team because he knows his uh, local players and then you've got uh, – you don't worry about any language barriers that might be uh, might occurring in, in that um, arena. And he's done such a great job for India when he's taking over, taken over with the test captaincy. He's got a good head on his shoulders. I think Ajinka Rahani is the man. Next question, please, Shubs. Oh, Tanmoy Chakraborty, how are you, mate? Um, nice to see the KKR jersey in the background. Yep, there she is in the background. Um, mate, Yuzi, cool deep, not in form. What will be the spin uh, bowling option for India in the way ahead or on the way ahead? Uh, I think Jadeja will come in. We're talking about one day international cricket. Jadeja's got to come back in. Uh, he adds extra depth down in that batting order and also he's a power hitter down there as well. He's got a good strike rate. And the other spinner I'd like to see come back is Ashwin in the one-day international team. I don't want to see Ashwin in T20 because um, his fitness, or not his fitness, but his pace in the field and pace running between the wickets could be a little bit costly in T20 cricket. Whereas in one-day cricket, uh, it's a little bit longer in the format, so you can get away with that. So Ashman's bowling and batting ability, I think he's got to come back into the one-day international team for me. Okay, next question, please, Shubs. Hi, Hoggy. Ruanik from Melbourne. How are you going, mate? Hope you're well over there. And uh, Ruanik, I hope you're getting into the AFL football as well, the Australian rules football, something different for uh, you guys. What do you think about uh, Prasid... Krishna going forward in the competitive Indian bowling lineup. Look, I think uh, Prasid offers a lot of difference. I think uh, there's a lot of upside with Prasid, but if you just look at the way he bowled in this tournament, I thought he bowled really well. 
Uh, someone who's trying to bowl with extra pace and extra bounce every now and then is going to lo- uh, bowl a couple of loose balls, where, which uh, just gives the batsman a little bit of room on the offside. I'm not too worried about that because sometimes you uh, create wicket-taking opportunities with the extra pace and bounce uh, just slightly wide of off stump. The only concern I have with Prasid is when under pressure and he wants to go for the Yorker, he's not consistent with that particular delivery. So for me, one thing that he can add to his repertoire is the Yorker delivery, and uh, that will improve his chances of playing one-day international cricket for India, but also being a uh, consistent player in his team at T20 level uh, during the IPL. Just that ability not to bowl a Yorker has kept him out of his, uh, or kept him out of playing more IPL cricket. So th- that's the only thing I'd say with Prasid: get a Yorker. I like him. Uh, he's got good height, good bounce. So there's a lot of upside. Good question, Ronak. Okay, next question, please, Shubs. Uh, Romans Tulda, how are you? Tulada, Tulada. I hope it, oh, I've said it right. I know some people will be having a bit of a laugh out there with the way that I've tried to pronounce that. Is this the start of Indian dominance in world cricket like it was for the West Indies in the 70s and Australia in the early 2000s? Thoughts? I think they're starting to get depth with their fast bowling. If uh, you're looking at in, anything with India with dominance, it was always uh, their batting was always going to be strong. Their spin department was always going to be dominant. But now they're gaining a lot of depth in fast bowling, and um, just the culture that is created in this Indian lineup and the way that I'm seeing the players gel. The players that are missing out on the bench, how they engage with the uh, the eleven out in the field. There's no one sulking, no one carrying on. This is a close unit, and Ravi Shastri and Virat Kohli are building something special here, and this could be an era for Indian cricket to uh, to dominate world cricket. So I, it, there's a lot of upside um, uh, to India moving forward. So, yes, that's what I think. India are going to be dominant over the next five to ten years, and it's going to be exciting as well. Uh, Shrish... Shrikant, how are you, mate? What makes Bhuvneshwar Kumar such an economical bowler across all formats? Very, very simple. He knows his game. He knows his strengths. He's very skillful. He can swing the ball both ways, but when the ball's not swinging and he doesn't have that extra pace, he's able to bowl a variety of different slower balls. And um, for me, that takes a lot of skill. And... Here in Australia, we're always wanting that extra pace because we think it's a huge advantage against uh, opposition teams. So we try and have three bowlers in our lineup that are bowling uh, 140 plus consistently. But sometimes you need to spare a bit of pace and have someone that's with skill that can move the ball in the air but also off the seam skillfully because a lot of players can't play the, uh, the swinging delivery. And also he can uh, he, he can get the ball to reverse as well, and uh, Prasid should be talking to him about bowling uh, a potent Yorker. He can hit the toes, but he can also hit those wide Yorkers as well. He's very skillful and he's worked very hard out getting where he is now. Uh, so for me, if you're a seam bowler out there that doesn't have pace, you've got to learn to have a good wrist to swing it both ways, but also have subtle variations of pace as well. And the the odd time, actually, the odd time I saw through this uh, one-day game, he did bowl uh, a ball which was two or three yards quicker than every other delivery that he bowled. I think he's bowling within himself with that skill. Dennis Lilly did it when he did his back injury. So I think Bhuvanesh Kumar is trying to look after his body with that skill. And uh, every now and then when he's feeling good, he'll bowl that quicker ball. He's a very smart cookie, uh, Shrish. Sorry about that. That, uh, that. that extra pace ball just came to my mind at that stage. That's why I added it in. Uh, Vasant Narain, how are you, mate? Uh, how can India get tail enders wickets easily? It cost them uh, 2018 England Test Series trophy and could uh, have cost them Border Gavaskar. How can India resolve this? I think it's just a, a matter of mindset, really. Um, sometimes when you 
get into a phase where you've got the momentum going and then you look out the scoreboard and you think, we've got this game won, they can't, they can't uh, get over it or they won't be able to get over the line, you lose focus on what you have to do. And uh, we've all been there. We've all done it. I remember a game here, West Australia versus New South Wales. We had them nine down, and Stuart McGill came out, and one of our players said, oh, Stu McGill, the world, world, uh, walking bonus point. They needed 150 runs to win, and uh, they got them very easily because we just thought it was going to happen. So I think... It's just a mentality uh, uh, mentality thing. And if you look at last night's game as well, you've got a lot of inexperienced pl- uh, bowlers in that lineup that will put under pressure and they're going to learn from it. And Ravi Shastri and Virat Kohli will be talking to those players afterwards, not aggressively, but just mentioning, you know, when we we're on top of the opposition team, we've got to nail it, especially teams against England. Otherwise, if we get too confident... Uh, we don't want that negative negative stuff re- going into our culture. We want to play a good brand of cricket the whole way through and uh, don't take your foot off the gas. So th- there'll be a few words there to those young players and watch them come be- back uh, better for it in the IPL when they put into those same situations. Next question, Shubs. Ah, uh, Cotter. How are you, mate? Um, thoughts about Ishan Kishan in One Day International Cricket? Uh, thanks. Hi from the USA. Thanks for um, Kota from the USA. Ishan Kishan in one day cricket. I think he could um, he could probably come in and uh, take Darwin's spot at some stage over the next year or two. If it doesn't happen before the twenty three World Cup, I think after the twenty three World Cup. I think uh, India will start playing a different brand of cricket. They'll still have Virat Kohli in at number three, but they'll start going down England's path with what uh, these players are showing in T20 cricket. That's the way forward with uh, one-day cricket. You've just got to play that aggressive brand of cricket and back yourself. And as we saw last night with uh, with Sam Curran, I think Ishan Kishan can do this as well, is in that longer form of the game, there's plenty of time. And if you just push the ones and twos and get the odd boundary, is you're amazed how how quick the scorecard to, uh, um, rotates. And Sam Karen was doing it well last night where he had three or four off the over, then he found the boundary, and all of a sudden you're getting 10 off the over. You don't have to take huge risks to get over 300 in uh, one-day cricket now. And I think Ishan Kishan could be the man to do that. Um, next question, please, Shabs. I'm, I'm excited about Ishan Kishan. I wish he was in here right now uh, in this team. Sakit Patel, how are you going again, mate? Uh, do you think Pant can be the greatest wicketkeeper batsman of this era? Um, you're looking at Joss Butler as well. Um, Joss Butler and Pant. I think we're going to be very, very fortunate watching two of the best wicketkeeper batsmen uh, in world cricket through this decade. So I think we're blessed with that. Um, yeah, he's definitely got the potential to be the best wicketkeeper batsman, but uh, it's going to be a, a fight between him and Joss Butler. So uh, we're very, very, very lucky in this decade to have two exciting players like that. But anyway, thank you very much for joining me uh, through this One Day International Series and the Test and T20 Series. Well done to India. They were out, uh, they outplayed England in all facets of the game, but it was an exciting series. Both teams uh, didn't fall away or give the game away easily, and these two teams in the future are going to be the teams to watch. They're both dominant, so well done to those teams. Anyway, we've got the IPL coming around. I have got some reviews for uh, or previews of the teams before the IPL starts. Keep your eye out for them. Uh, one's coming tomorrow, so see you then.